Underdogs no more. McKinney North is in the playoffs for the first time in five years, and we're very glad to be joined by head coach Mike Fetchy after his Bulldogs clinched with an 11-7 win over Wiley. And Mike, a moment I know I'll never forget is not just your team celebrating as soon as the clock hit triple zero, but you yourself letting the emotion pour out. You turn, you unleash this yell toward <laughs> the near sideline and the fans that were roaring in approval. What was that moment right there like for you personally? That was a real gratifying moment. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, something as a coach you, you, you think about getting to and doing uh, and to finally get there, uh, you know, that was kind of my moment to say, okay, we've got to get that out of my system because now I'm one of those guys, I'm ready to go now and let's go talk about who we're playing. But we, were, we enjoyed it. I'm real, real proud of our kids. It was a special moment for us, a special moment for me, and, and we're excited to be where we are. In the 4A Division II playoffs, more on North's opponent Frisco Centennial in just a moment. But first, back to Friday night at Ron Poe Stadium, senior night against the Wiley Pirates. And yes, uh, in addition to a playoff spot being on the line, Mike, it was senior night. And that means your senior quarterback, Hunter Walling, making some plays early on in the passing game. He did. He got the ball out to Randy Monsier and played well early. You know, I mean, uh, you know, Hunter's done a good job for us all year long when he does the things that he's, uh, you know, great job on this screen pass to Evan, and, and uh, we were able to move the ball some at times, and uh, we were happy with how he played. Drove to the Wiley 39 before C.J. Carter picked off Walling. One play later, Terrell Burt was in the end zone. It was 7-0 Wiley, and in a game like this, not exactly an easy deficit to come back from. No, it wasn't. You know, they jumped out to that early quick lead and to score on their first offensive play, uh, you know, I, the beauty of it was is I don't think our kids ever panicked. You know, we've been in that situation before where we didn't play real, real well early uh, and have had to come back, but our offense answered the call. Our defense really answered the call. And uh, Walling threw the great pass and great catch by Peter Winter right here, diving one-handed catch. And, you know, we made some plays and we had to make them. Yeah, unreal play by your fourth-string X receiver who <laughs> started the last three games, uh, who has stepped up so nicely. Speaking of stepping up, how about Eric Mills in the middle, really limiting that Wiley running game, yeah, which had Wiley, been so hot. Yeah, Mills and McClay, and we get a safety right here on intentional ground in the end zone. Those guys up front have really been playing well, and, man, we're excited about that right now. Walling firing to the outside again as he finds his target. It was 7-2 to two after one quarter. Wiley couldn't find any traction offensively. Your defense uh, shut them out the rest of the way, and Walling finds Evan Jones on the yeah, slip Evan screen Yeah, Evan really again. did a good job catching the football for us. That was a really tough catch right there, and to get upfield on that screen pass, and, and then Walling punched this thing in right here on a, you know, we had tried a few times some other stuff and, and couldn't get it in, and boy, that was a big score for us right there. On fourth and goal, of course, it was set up by Sam Lucania's big catch to make it first and goal. Lucania playing his first game since the district opener. Yeah, he had a great ball game for us, and we're glad to have Sam back and Austin Parsons back. And to get some of these kids back that have been sticking by us and have been injured for a good part of the season, to get them back and to have them be a part of our playoff team is exciting. What was working so well defensively, especially against Burt? You held him to 87 yards on 20 carries. I think that our defensive line was, was key to that. I think Ed Garcia and Lozoya and Dama Parrish at linebacker played exceptionally well. Uh, and then the times that he did get past those guys, I was real proud of Justin DeLeon and, and Mahalik coming up from the secondary and, and making plays. But, you know, Trey Williams was just tenacious in his pass rush and gets him a sack right here. And, you know, we played well in the defensive line, and we got after those guys. And... Uh, you know, there's Dom and Triplett and them running to the football, and that's what you got to do to play good defense is run to the ball. You're able to add to your 8-7 to seven lead, Anthony Lazoya, now 2-for-2 two two on field goals, 34 yards last week, 26 yards this week. Speaking of special teams, how about McClay blocking this punt? Yeah, McClay kind of did it all that night, didn't he? He blocked the punt, he had the sack in the end zone, and, and that was a huge deal to give us a chance to kick a field goal late in the first half. But, you know, look at Trey Williams and Preston Spears and our defensive line just – just getting their pads down in there and playing well. Devin Smith gave you everything that he possibly had. Smith finding room there, 44 yards on 18 attempts. He's still working his way back from the knee injury, and he gave you everything he had in the He tank. did. I mean, Devin, Devin plays extremely, extremely hard. He just got fatigued there at the end. And, uh, you know, we're, we, we just got him out of there because we, we, we thought, we, you know, we're, hey, we're going to need this guy next week. So we got him out of there, and Lazoy came in and did a great job. But... You know, I can't say enough here. There's Jacob McClay getting a big sack for us. I can't say enough about our defensive line and our defense in general. You know, block this thing right here and 
you know, it's a big deal when you can play defense like we've been playing. Especially after Wiley had put together its best drive of the night. 15 plays, seven minutes, and the Pirates came up empty. Yeah, that was a big drive. Stopper forced them to get no points out of it. And, uh, you know, again, I'm just, I can't say enough about them. I'm just proud of them, proud of every kid in our program. Uh, you know, we fought through a lot of things. We've stuck by what we believe in. And uh, when you can do those things and it pays off, boy, that's just uh, poetic justice for us. How about the play of Lazoya? He kicks that field goal for you. He started on defense, and he finished the game at running back because Devin just couldn't mm -hmm. complete that game. He's fatigued, as you mentioned, and Lazoya really helped close this game out on the final drive, right. bullying his way for extra yardage. He did. You know, Anthony's, Anthony's one of those kids on your football team you love to have because he can play a variety of things. Um, you know, a couple weeks back when Spears was out, Anthony played defensive tackle for us. Uh, and did a good job there, you know. And when you got kid, a kid that can play defensive tackle, linebacker, kick field goals, and play running back, I mean, that's four things in one. And, and we got a number of kids that are like that. And, you know, uh, we're going to need them in this playoff run for sure. Like you told us on the postgame show on 97.5 KLIK, you were thankful for that coach's clock worksheet <laughs> uh, up at the press box so you could figure out, all right, how many first downs do I need? Uh, three minutes to go. How many times do we need to snap the football once we're, you know, inside right. a minute right. and you were able to close things out? Yeah, we laugh about that little piece of paper because it's, it's you know, it's just a chart that's put out that most coaches take in the press box that tells you, you know, if you've got this much time, like you say, and they have no timeouts, how many plays you've got to run and so on and so forth. And, you know, I'm usually not a big believer in the chart, uh, to be honest with you, but I asked them upstairs, what do we need to do? And, and they responded back, well, the chart says, and uh, I said, well, let's, let's see what happens here. And we were able to kneel it out. Uh, and boy, to, to kneel out a victory like that is special. And we were excited about it. Now the 4A Division II playoffs. Here you go. And you meet the district champion mm -hmm. from District 9 4A, Frisco Centennial, former district foe of yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, our kids know these kids. You know, they've been in our district. Uh, you know, our, our seniors, Devin, and, uh, and uh, Devin Smith and Daryl, who were sophomores uh, my first year here, that was – that was my first ever coaching win was against Frisco Centennial, and they were talking about that the other day, and we beat them 31-14 to 14 last time we played them. Um, you know, we're talking about that and where we've come since then, where they've come since then. Uh, you know, Coach Howard, he's a tremendous, tremendous man. He does a really good job with those kids. Uh, you know, they're 10-0. and 0. They're the district champion. Uh, we got our hands full. they got a great defense. They have an offense that can move the ball all over the field, and we got a big challenge before us, but, you know, we've – We've had big challenges every week, and uh, you know, hopefully these, our kids will go out and answer that call. You're right, 10-0. and 0, It starts with their defense, but Mark Howard's team also has a pretty dynamic quarterback in mm -hmm. Lamar Jordan, who's a dual threat. Right, he's a dual threat kid. You know, he's one of those kids that can, they can beat you by running it. He can throw the football. You know, they're very effective on offense. They have a very uh, sophisticated scheme offensively. Uh, defensively, not very sophisticated. They're just really solid and good. Uh, they're the number one rated defense in 4A. Uh, you know, they uh, were given some kind of crazy stat like 1.1 yards per carry or something like that. And uh, when you watch them on film, what first thing jumps out is how tech not technically sound they are and how hard they play. Uh, they've got a tremendous nose guard. The guy's kid's got a tr great get off, and boy, he's strong as an ox, and we're going to have our hands full with him. Uh, but it's going to be an exciting time. You know, I told our kids today, I mean, this is the playoffs. You know, I mean, uh, we got to go do what we need to do. It, it's a special time overall in McKinney ISD, and I know you're obviously so focused in on Centennial this week, but the fact that for the first time ever, this school district has two teams making the playoffs, mm -hmm. North and then, of course, Boyd mm -hmm. in Class 5A. Yeah, I think that's special. You know, I mean, uh, I talked to Drake a little bit this morning about some of that stuff, and, you know, I mean, it's just a, this is a great place to work. It's a great district. It plays good football. And, you know, for to have two people in it is special and nice, and hopefully we can both, you know, go do some things and make some noise and, and make a run here and see what happens. Mike, we appreciate the time. We'll see you Friday night. Thanks, Ted. It is a game that is five years in the making. McKinney North back in the playoffs. We hope you can join us Friday night, 7 o'clock. We're on the air before North and Centennial kick off in the first round of the 4A Division II playoffs at John Clark Field in Plano.